welcome back guys to week two of It's Personal. I thought this week we'd start off a little breezy. Uh, I personally love pranks. So uh, I thought, why not share a few to start off uh, this teaching? So uh, in 2018, I had the privilege to uh, move out to Saskatchewan with 11 other people. You're like, 11 other people? It wasn't just friends. We were going for a discipleship program. So we were all crammed into one house. There was 11 students and five leaders. Uh, this was, I was at the age of eight and uh, 19. Most of us were 18, 19, but there was six guys and five girls. So, and we were all the students. And so, uh, it, us guys, we were a little immature. We were a little, uh, we were still 18, 19. So, uh, we thought it'd be funny in week one to prank the girls when they were off at their Bible study. So as our first prank, we, we were going to put a saran wrap over their toilet so that if they sat down and they peed, it'd go everywhere. But our leaders didn't allow us to do that. So we defaulted to the idea of saran wrapping all their blankets and pillows. We thought it was pretty funny. They come home, they had a little laugh, and we moved on. A, a, week, uh, a week or two later, uh, we had another idea. This is, I think, January 31st. We... Uh, we cut up, us guys, us six guys, cut up a bunch of paper. So I got some paper here. We cut a bunch of paper into very small pieces of, uh, of, of paper and put it in a garbage can, a garbage bag. And one day when all the girls were out of the house again, we took this garbage bag and we dumped all these pieces of little, little small pieces of paper all over their bedroom because they all shared one room. We put it in their bed, we put it in their pillows, we put it in their drawers, everywhere. The thing is, these pranks, they didn't, weren't offended. They actually had fun with it. They took boomerangs, they took Snapchats of it, and they, were, they actually had a fun time with it. And it was, it was, we were glad, but part of pranks is to, is to trick them, is to get them a little bit frustrated, but also having a good time. So the theme is that they weren't getting upset by these pranks, right? The third prank, we stole their door off their bathroom. They had a bathroom in their bedroom, and so we took the door off the hinges, and so whenever they used the washroom, they couldn't have privacy. Um, fourth prank, we're starting to get a little deeper, more serious here. So the girls uh, one day asked us to make them pancakes, and this is our fourth prank now, and the girls are okay with all three of the first pranks. The fourth prank, they asked us to make pancakes for them one morning. So that morning we decided, uh, that night, the night before we were supposed to make them pancakes, we decided, um, how about we make pancakes on them instead of for them? And so in the middle of the night, we got up, grabbed flour, grabbed water, grabbed eggs, and we tossed them on them while they were sleeping. You may be thinking, why in the world would you do that? It caused such a mess. I don't know why we did it, but we thought it was going to be hilarious. And again, the girls did not respond negatively. They, they were upset, but they didn't let us know it. And so finally, our final prank, we were like, okay, well, we got to go all out here. The girls left. We moved all their stuff in their bedroom outside. We rearranged the room outside. They come back to the house, they find it, they put it back together, and again, did not say anything. A few weeks go by, and if, if you were in person, you would see this video. Um, I toss it up on the screen right now, but the girls got us back bad. They, while us guys were out of the house, they finally retaliated. They packed all our stuff into garbage bags. They filmed themselves doing this, and they actually filmed themselves donating all our clothes to the thrift store that was right down the street from our place. They donated all our clothes. At least that's what we were led to believe. We found out later that evening that they actually hid all our clothes in the basement of the church. And that was only after hours of trying to figure out where they were. And, and the thrift store was closed by the time we found out. So we couldn't even go to the thrift store and grab them. And I share all this, A, because I love pranks and, and many people do, but 
I share this because to ask the one question, can we truly know someone 100%? These girls pretended they didn't, weren't affected by our pranks. And all of a sudden, after one prank, they won the prank war. They won the prank war after one prank. So can we truly know someone 100%? Unfortunately, many of us have uh, experienced a time when someone has surprised us by doing something we didn't expect them or uh, where we realized, oh, we didn't really know them. Uh, situation for you guys may be if you have a school talent show or any type of talent show at wherever you are, there's always one person that comes out and like starts juggling knives or juggling whatever and you're like how in the world did I not know they could do this right um but some other times uh, it might be someone you were really close with may have forgotten your birthday and you're like how in the world could they forget my birthday of all days that's important to me my birthday or someone that you thought knew you forgot your name in public where you're introducing everybody to a new person and they come to you and they're like uh, and this is, and forget your name. We've all been in these situations where uh, reality is we find out that someone may not know us as well as we thought they knew us. These moments that we all experience do not feel good whatsoever. The thing is, if we were honest, I believe every single one of us wants to be fully known. I made a stat up here, but the reality is most people here, or just in general, not just those watching, just in general, don't feel like there's anyone that knows them 100%. Let me show you what I mean. We got person A. Say this is your school friend or uh, friends from school. They may be people you laugh with, maybe you share school drama with. Maybe they even know you go to church. But the thing is, they may not know your faith. They may not know about your relationship with God, but they know you go to church. We got person B here. Maybe these are people on your sports teams or your clubs. They may know who you root for in, in the World Cup, or they may know who you root for in the NBA or NHL or Maybe they know your favorite uh, film, but do they know what's going on at home with your family drama? Maybe next guy, we got your church friends, people that you come to youth with. They may know your faith like your school friends don't, but they, the people at church know your faith. They know about your relationship with God, but do they know your situation at school? Do they know that you are hurting because you've been left out at school? This is totally normal. But honestly, if I were to be honest, sometimes it'd be nice for people to understand us more. All our quirks, all our interests, our fears, our doubts, our struggles, but instead, most of the time, we feel like nobody fully gets us. And this is where we pick up the story of Zacchaeus again. Or, yeah, Zacchaeus again. Last week, Pastor Matt spoke a little bit about uh, Zacchaeus and, and who he was and gave you, um, and talked about how uh, it's personal because Jesus knows your name and how Jesus called Zacchaeus down from the tree by name. And so, Something I'm going to repeat what he spoke about last week or the week before, if you are junior high, uh, is that Zacchaeus was worked for the Roman Empire as a tax collector, but in a Jewish community. And so he wasn't actually uh, accepted by the Roman Empire and he wasn't respected by the Jewish community because he was overtaxing them so that he could get more money. And so we're going to pick up the story right where we left it off last week. It's Luke chapter 19, verse 
5, we're going to start at verse 5. It says, When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. What's remarkable about this story is from the outside, Jesus and Zacchaeus are completely different. We know uh, Jesus to be loving, kind, respected by many, loved by many. And he cared and treated others with love. That's who we know Jesus to be, and that is who Jesus is. But Zacchaeus, on the other hand, he was neglected, he wasn't respected, and he was not um, uh, accepted in his community. So why did Jesus invite himself over? Well, in that time, to uh, he wasn't inviting himself over because he just wanted a meal. He, he needed someone to make him a meal. But it was actually a, a position of respect, of friendship. If you hosted someone, like Zacchaeus was going to host Jesus at Jesus' request, it showed that you were friends. So why did Jesus invite himself over if they were so completely different? Well, because Jesus cared about what Zacchaeus cared about. Though Zacchaeus was the one mistreating Jesus' people, mistreating um, uh, his community, even though Jesus was the one that was, was loving everybody, even though Zacchaeus was probably acting tougher than he was because he was able to take their money, Jesus understood that Zacchaeus was just a person. He wanted to belong. He wanted to be accepted. He wanted to be seen and he wanted to be known. We see this because in chapter six, uh, in verse 6 it says, so he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. Jesus made it personal by knowing what Zacchaeus cared about, what mattered to Zacchaeus. So many of us often ask the question, well, does God care whether I win my soccer game or not? So many of us ask, uh, does he care that I wasn't invited to a group hangout with my friends uh, when everyone else was? Does he care about my anxiety that I, uh, I face every time I go to sleep? Or does he care about the hurt in my family? Or does he only care about how much I pray? Does Jesus only care how much I read my Bible? Does he only care that I don't cuss? Does he only care uh, if I'm being obedient to my parents? And I want you to know that the things that matter to you matter to him. Through Zacchaeus' story of being neglected, being not accepted in his uh, community, yet Jesus calls him down and invites himself over as an act of friendship. I hope that can bring encouragement because Jesus wasn't looking at the outward uh, lifestyle of Zacchaeus. He wasn't judging him for what he did, but he cared about who Zacchaeus was in his heart. He cared about what truly mattered to Zacchaeus. Jesus understood that Zacchaeus was just a person who wanted to belong and Jesus went over to his place to show him that he did. We're going to shift gears a little to now what's our response? What do we take? We can accept that as truth for ourselves, but what can we do moving forward with that truth, living like Christ? Well, something Pastor Matt said last teaching was that it's not enough to know fa just to know facts about Jesus. It's about knowing him personally, just as he knows you personally. And as Christ followers, it's not enough to know facts about people. It's what's important is getting to know people personally, getting to know them by knowing what matters to them. This isn't to say you have to get to know everyone personally. You have to know what matters to every individual piece, person, every single person. Because only Jesus can do that, to be honest. But it's learning what matters to people around you. 
So I've got two challenges for you guys. Challenge number one, talk, try talking to Jesus, talking to God about what matters to you. Every single one of these categories, school, uh, sports, hobbies, clubs, and church, Jesus wants to hear about every single one of them. He knows what matters to you. He knows that uh, you might not have been uh, invited to a, a friend hangout that was your school friends or you're left out at recess or you want to be part of a group project. He, he knows that you want to win your sports game and that you're upset about that. He knows you want to be the lead in your play. And he knows that you're, you may be struggling with uh, this whole faith idea. He knows that you desire to be known, but you don't know, really know what that means. What matters to you in each category of your life matters to him. God cares deeply about what you care about and cares about how you are feeling. So through prayer, let's talk to him and let's share with him how you are feeling, okay? Number two, talk to others about what interests them. Philippians uh, 2 verses 1 to 5, it says, Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Paul goes on to talk about the character of Jesus, which is selfless. And he looked out for the interests of others. So that's my challenge to you. Talk to others about what interests them. So for those of you that haven't accept, uh, that have accepted Christ as your Savior, that um, have accepted Christ into your life, I want you to think about this. Everybody needs somebody who knows their name and who knows them personally. But I want you to think about something this week. Do you know what matters to the people you know? Really? Have you taken the time to personally, uh, to be personal enough to try and get them? And if you are, if you have not accepted Christ into your life just yet, or are unsure about this a faith situation, I hope that I, I, I want to encourage you: climb the tree like Zacchaeus did. You may be feel like you're on the outside. Zacchaeus was definitely on the outside. He climbed the tree to figure out who this Jesus was. So I encourage you, keep investigating who Jesus is. And I promise you, he is calling you by name right now. <clears throat> and I want you to know he truly knows what matters to you. Okay? So remember, guys, it's personal because Jesus, he knows what matters to you. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for sending your son down to earth just to be an example, just to show us what you are like and who you are. Father, thank you that you know us personally, that you care about our sports, that you care about our, our family situations, that you care about us and you care what matters to us. Father, I pray for everyone watching this and everyone listening that they may know this to be true, that they, they come to you in prayer and um, share what's going on and, and that they can make it personal with you. Father, I pray that as we go and take this, uh, this challenge of going to learn about what matters to others, to, to get to know someone personally, deep. Lord, I pray that you may go with us that we may become selfless just as you are selfless. 
that we may not think of ourselves, but be thinking of others. So Father, thank you so much for your example. Thank you so much for who you are. And may we continue to serve you and be an example of you in this world. Amen. Amen.